Hi, my name is Mallory, and once again, this is the NIUSB Biophysical Measurement System. Now, in the previous video, I showed you how to connect your sensors, in this case, a heart rate or blood volume pulse sensor, to the isolation uh, provided by the Thought Technology Sensor Isolator. Uh, you'll notice that the respiration belt is no longer in the screen. It's currently about my abdomen. We've cabled from the isolator to our 9239 analog input module. Now, you'll notice that I've replaced the 9174 four-slot compact DAC chassis with this, the 9178 eight-slot chassis. Now, this allows us to incorporate additional modules to expand the functionality of our system. So here, I've got the 9274. Uh, the 9263 analog output module in case I'd like to generate or simulate uh, an EEG signal maybe from uh, a file that's been previously recorded I can output this and connect it to an input to run test and here I've got the 9205 uh, 32 channel analog input module and this is if I have a high channel count application the 9234 and the 9239 only have four channels of input the 9219 here is that universal input module that I told you about, uh, capable of requiring a number of signals. So, the 8-slot chassis, once again, I've powered from the wall and then cabled to my computer using USB. So let's begin building a simple data acquisition program. You'll notice here, I'm in LabVIEW, I've created a blank VI. This gray window is going to be the front panel or the user interface, where we have controls and indicators. This white panel is going to be the block diagram where the graphical source code of my program exists. To do simple data acquisition, I can go to the measurement I.O. palette, to NIDACMX, which is the driver of our DAC hardware, and then to the DAC assistant, and I can place this down. The DAC assistant is an express VI that allows you, at the click of a button, to configure your program. I'd like to do analog input and a voltage, and I'd like to acquire two channels from my 9239. By holding the shift key, I can select both channels and click finish. The configuration window will appear next, and this is where I can, at a click of a button, once again configure my task settings. The details tab will show me that I'm working from module 2 uh, in my chassis, and I'm acquiring analog input 0 and analog input 1, which are my first two channels. I can hide these details. Really, the only thing that I need to change here is I'd like to acquire continuously, and I'd like to read 1,000 samples with every iteration of my while loop, and I'd like to acquire them at a rate of 10 kill samples. Okay. So if I click all right, now it's going to verify that these are correct settings, and then it's going to build the source code behind the scenes for me based off the settings I selected. It's going to ask if I'd like to place this DAC assistant in the loop, and since I'm acquiring continuously, I'm going to place yes. Now you'll notice that uh, a while loop has been placed around, um, placed around the DAC assistant, the loop has a conditional terminal that when the stop button that's been added to the front panel here is pressed, a true value is seen at the conditional terminal and the while loop stops. The next thing I'd like to do is I'd like to perform some type of signal analysis or processing. In this case, I'd like to filter high frequency components, anything above 5 hertz. I'm acquiring my heart rate and my respiration rate, which I don't expect to be faster than about 2 or 3 hertz, if that. So I'm going to use a low pass filter with a cutoff frequency of 5. Uh, you can select a different type of filter if you'd like, and then click OK. And now, as I wire my data that I've recently acquired into my Filter Express VI, that filtered signal is going to exit with all of the high frequency components removed. Now, let's go ahead and split this signal. Remember, I'm acquiring two channels of analog input. I would like to split these um, so that I can display them on different charts. Let's create those charts. If I go to the front panel, I can go to the control palette, to the graph sub palette, and place down a waveform chart. Let's call this pulse. Now I can place down a second waveform chart. In this case, I'm going to call it respiration. Okay, if I go back to my front panel, I need to wire both of these. Okay, so pulse is going to be analog input channel 0, and respiration is going to be analog input channel 1. And now our, our program is ready to run. So let me come over here and place my finger uh, on top of the um, LED and photodiode of the heart rate sensor and click run. And we should see uh, our signal begin to vary. In the top you can see that varying heart rate. Uh, I've left auto scale on so that we can uh, zoom in and see. You'll notice there's a two and a half 
about a two and a half full offset uh, introduced by the isolation. And then the respiration rate, um, if on the bottom screen I stop talking for a bit, we can see the respiration rate vary. So this is how you acquire data from the NI Biophysical Measurement System.